Hi and welcome to another one of my vintage i5 videos. In today's video I just wanted to quickly talk about buying a second hand CD player. There are the advantages and disadvantages that I can think of that you may come across in doing so. I bought this one very very recently when I was on holiday. I will do a little video on that and a couple of other items I picked up that you may be interested in and maybe to look out for while even going on holiday. Um, this is a JVC XL M408 CD player, it's a multi one. I didn't go out to buy this, it's just it was there, it was cheap enough, so I bought it. I've already got a Marantz 52 CD player, uh, and this would be good if that one packed up. I've got another CD uh, straight at hand to use when I look for another one. Or well, at the moment, I'm happy with this anyway, it sounds fine to me, so maybe when that packs up, if it does, I've got this to fall back on. Um, yeah, so really, what the pitfalls of maybe buying a second-hand CD player, first of all. I can think of just a few, really. Uh, obviously, some electrical parts can go wrong. Pretty much of anything that uh, you buy second-hand, you could last five minutes, you could never last another five, 15 years. Who knows? I mean, it could be a power supply problem, actual main circuit, stuff like that. I mean, that can go on anything anyway. Uh, obviously, with a new one, you're going to have a guarantee against that. But the main thing with CD players really is the um, that I, I can think of off the top of my head at the moment is that the the tray, the, the mechanism of that, maybe not so much the mechanism, it's actually the drive belt. It's a little belt, little rubber belt normally that pulls the tray in and out. I mean, that can get slippery and get too big and need replacing, so that's one thing. Though some CD players that I've had in the past and seen actually got a plastic cog, so they, they haven't got that drive belt, but most of them have got that drive belt. And the other thing is the laser. The laser can get weak, burn out, etc. So you will need a new laser maybe and getting one second hand and getting someone to fit it because it's quite a tedious job and a tricky job to be honest with you. And I've, I've only ever done two and I've only ever got one working and the other one failed. Whether I've got a faulty laser as a replacement, I don't know. So, and for what, I think I paid £20 for the laser, so I bought two lasers, £20 each, so, so for 40 quid, I might as well not bothered and actually gone out and bought another CD player anyway, second hand. Um, not this is a really, really good one, uh, and you think it's worth, worth the hassle. Uh, also, going with the laser, it's not always the laser, it can be the tracking of the laser. Um, if you can imagine that each side of the of that tray is two runners where the laser, you know, the tray sits on, and the, and the laser. Uh, is underneath as well, it's on two, usually on two metal bars the laser, but the tray's going in and out, so obviously that tray needs to be level for the laser to, you know, to the CD, uh, for the laser to pick it up. Now, a good tip here really, it's not, no, not a fantastic tip, but a little tip is to keep your CD plan level, keep it level like you do your turntable, keep it level, so when that tray goes in and out, it, 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 it just keeps it level, so both sides, if they're going to wear over time, they're going to wear both sides together, so obviously two wearing rather than one side, it's going to last a bit longer than just one side wearing. A bit like your tyres, if you just went on one tyre all the time, that tyre will wear quicker than if you went on two. Um, yeah, so keep that level, So because if you're slightly out, I mean it can go anyway, just be the way it is, but if it goes tips to one side, and obviously that CD is just tilted a little bit, so when the laser comes to read it, it can't read it correctly, so um, or read it at all even, so maybe that's another reason that it goes. There is an adjustment. If you get the service manual, you'll find two screws normally at the back of the, of the plastic mechanism that you can adjust the tilt on that, the screw on it, just slightly and maybe bring it up. So that's something that could go wrong as well. So there's, there's a couple of things off the top of my head that I think you could have a bit of trouble with. Uh, these displays do go as well at some stage. They can last years, but they can go, especially the fluorescent ones. Um, they can go as well the gas kind of leaks or, or something like that and um, they go. So that's a couple of things I think you know you may have trouble with on a second hand CD. But obviously the benefits are you can get a good CD player for next to no money or fairly cheap. I mean all the units I've got, you know, receivers, amps, nothing's more than two hundred pound. So I won't be paying more than two hundred pound, you know, myself personally for a CD player new or second hand really because I don't think it's going to benefit me getting anything dear. I'm not going to hear the, the difference in the sound quality that may be an higher and expensive, especially like what, a thousand pound CD player and I'm playing it through a 50 pound amp. A bit, a bit silly. I'm not going to hear the difference, I don't think, at all. Um, so, yeah, 
Oh, you know, I think a second hand one's pretty, you know, pretty good really. Like I mean, like I say, you can have it down for, but you can get something really cheap. And normally these ones, this was made in 1993. Uh, and CDs come out in about the 80 to 83 kind of eight bracket. And but these are ones in the 90s and these older ones, uh, going back to about 90, say, you know, maybe 95 or something, they're quite solidly built, you know, the mechanism's strong, everything's strong. And to, I think, you know, today the CD players I think are more mass produced. And the mechanisms are quite flimsy and, and not very good. They're not built to last. I'm not talking about eight hundred pound, five hundred pound. I'm talking about you know the mainstream hundred and two hundred pound maybe CD players, and maybe not built to last. So you may this could quite easy you know last a lot longer than if I went and bought a brand new one today for hundred and fifty pounds. So and continuously played and non-stop. I think you know this could quite easy last longer than the uh, than the new one. So. Now I think it's a pretty good idea getting a second hand CD player than, than a new one. You can save yourself some money obviously and worst case scenario you spend 30, 40 pounds say, um, maybe 50 pound that bracket, you know, $60, $50 that kind of, you know, sorry I keep forgetting to put things in dollars as well because I know there's a few American watches. Um, yeah, it could, you know, if it completely fails, you can't get it mended, you can't kind of sort anything out yourself or get anyone to fix it for you, you can sling it away and get another one. I know there you've paid two hundred, uh, hundred dollars or a uh, hundred pound or there thereabouts for two of them, but that's only if it goes wrong. It could quite easily, like say, outlast a new one. So that's just my thoughts on the, and maybe tips on buying a second hand CD player. So I will come back with it a video because I like say I went on holiday recently. I picked up a few items even on holiday. I'm always looking out for stuff, and I just want to give you an idea of maybe where to look, and uh, maybe a bit more, a few bargains you can find out while on holiday maybe hunting around on ebay etc anyway thanks for watching this video and i'll see you all soon